Hi, I'm TR, and this is my Mid-Century Ranch Home Renovation Project. So hey, good morning. It's uh, all about 7 o'clock and I'm just getting started for the day. I thought I'd do a little general project area cleanup. Um, I do have a helper coming today, hopefully. He bailed on me yesterday, but uh, I've got some work that I'd like to have him do. Uh, he's a friend of mine's, well, I've known him since he was very young, and I thought I'd help him out. So with that, I'm just kind of finishing up and straightening things out here. Big day today. I'll be finishing the texturing on all the walls. Again, fingers crossed. If it gets too hot, uh, I may have to stop, but I think I can get through it all. Based on some advice from a friend of mine that did sheetrock and drywall work for years, um, he told me to get some topping compound and do all my final coats with the topping compound. I'd have to say he was right. It's been good stuff to work with, but uh, overall, we're going to just get things straightened up here and then I'll show you kind of some of the progress we've made. So I've got to say, I know where a lot of the smells coming from in this house and this carpet is just full of pet stains. Get out of the shadow. All along the walls, especially bad right here. And then right over here, again, pretty bad. But we get our first peek at the floors, and they are going to be beautiful. I'll give you a better peek here. So let's do a little archaeology on these floors, because it's kind of interesting. That right there is the remnants of wallpaper removal. I know that because I did quite a bit of wallpaper removal in this house. And uh, so apparently somebody has removed the wallpaper from these walls and they did an okay job. I've had to do quite a lot of uh, touch up in here, patching, but I think I pretty much got that done and we're just about ready to uh, go back and do our final sanding and then start texturing. But we were talking about the floors. Obviously, some paint from a past painting. A lot of that up here, what you're seeing up there is just dust for me sanding on the patches I've had to do. And we'll go back over here. So that's kind of where we're at for right now. Um, it's just about time to get started on finishing up the masking. And um, I've got a mask off this fireplace. I had a temporarily masked just to keep the mud off of it when I was mudding on the walls. Luckily, the ceilings don't need any work. They're textured uh, with a medium weight texture. I'm going to, everything's going to get primed. So I'm going to prime everything. If it's not moving, it's going to get primed. And then I'm also working on the doors. So what I'm working on here is, is that there was a big gouge in this door and this is the closet door and it butts up against the bedroom door. And I think what happened is, is the doorknob probably got on this and then scrapped it pretty bad. It probably got jammed. So uh, just a little bit of uh, plastic wood and uh, I'll sand that off this morning and we should be good to go. But I am sanding these doors. Um, actually, if my helper shows up today, that's one of the things he's gonna do is sand these doors. We're not gonna sand the paint off. I was just taking them down here to uh, get to these problem areas. But um, we're gonna sand them smooth so that way when I paint them, uh, I'm not uh, painting over years of runs and everything else. It's just, uh, I guess I have OCD when it comes to that kind of stuff. I like to have a nice, clean, crisp, fresh paint job. The other thing I gotta do, let's see. 
So the other thing I've got to do is I've got to measure up these windows today because I need to get my blinds ordered. I'm probably going to be a couple weeks waiting for blinds, which should work out okay. Um, if worst case scenario, I'll just hang a sheet or something over this until I can get the blinds in. They shouldn't be that long, but I was looking last night. It looks like it could be, you know, towards the end of the month before I can get the blinds based on their delivery and all this other stuff. So I'm just going to measure up these windows. The way these windows are, I don't have enough headroom up here to do an inset blind, which I'd really like to do. So I'm going to do a blind that covers the whole window and uh, you need three inches. You need to add an inch and a half on either side of this um, for additional light and privacy. And so we're just going to measure this outside casing and from the sill to the top of the casing. So that's 77. Now I'm thinking about this and I've already got four and a half inches of window frame and then trim. And I feel like that's probably going to be enough uh, privacy and coverage to keep light out. I'm not worried so much about light or privacy really, but anyway, that's the way you want to have it. So I'm going to drop the three inches and just go with 77. So we're into the living room. It's 77 wide by on the sill to the top of the, okay, that's 55. And I think I will add two inches to that, 57. So let's check that. Okay, so it's actually 54 and three quarters. And if I add two inches, that would be 56 and three quarters. We'll go 57. And so that's gonna give me room. I'm gonna to have to put a mounting block up here for the blinds. There'll probably be one on this corner and one on that corner. And they'll probably stick out well, let's see, we are at three quarters right now. And so I'll probably get some one by twos or two by twos, probably two by twos. I'll paint them up and make them look really nice and then I'll mount them to the wall and then the blinds will mount to that. You'll see that in a future episode. So the two windows that flank the fireplace are the same size. And we've got 28 and a half. I'm gonna go yeah, 28 and then three quarters. So 28 and three quarters. <laughs> three quarters by 5. I'm guessing it's probably going to be 57 again. So that's 55 and a half. We're going to go 50. Hmm, we want the high head height to be the same, don't we? We need to figure this out. It's 31 wide by 58 tall. And I think I'm going to go ahead and make this one 58 too. Yes. So we're going to make this one 58. All right, let's call that good. So one of the other things I'm going to do is I'm going to replace every outlet and every switch in the house. I've already investigated a couple and found some pretty scary situations. But for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and do a takeoff. I'm going to count all the outlets in the room. And so I've got to count. So in the living room here, we've got one. Let's see, we've got one, two, three, four. And I believe there's one over here behind the camera. So we've got five outlets. And we have one duplex switch. So two switches and a duplex cover. So what we have here is we have a switched outlet. And all a switched outlet is is that this outlet right here is switched. And so it's a way to keep the electrical expenses low. Uh, back in the 50s, this was a pretty common option. In fact, today, occasionally you'll find it. But all it is is just they switch one outlet. So what I'm going to do is, is that this outlet um, might still remain switched, but I'm gonna use that switch and the power going there to power two LED lights that I plan on putting in the ceiling in here. Here's something fun that I found as I've been working and I didn't realize it until I uh, started uh, plugging things in. Half the electrical outlets are upside down. So like that one, the ground is on the upside. <clears throat> They're not grounded anyway, but that is typical of this house. I'll tell you what, 
I bet I have found 20 different types of screws. Uh, and used in the mounting of the same thing, there might be two or three different types of screws. It's really interesting. It's like they had a screw box and they just used whatever they could find. And uh, the electrical outlets are kind of the same way. So we have this type. This type, that's a Decora type Leviton that's ivory. So we're back to one of those. Here's another Decora, also ivory. And a Decora over here. Now you come into this room. And then here's this Leviton Decora, again mounted upside down. And then we're going to really roll back time. And we got an old two pronger right here. Of course, I have plans to change all those outlets and the switches, by the way, um, because I've noticed a real problem. And this is something I've discovered in a couple of spots, and I'm sure I'm going to find it everywhere as I go around and I start to change out all these outlets. So this outlet here, it's in the wall by the kitchen. Watch this. That arc uh, tells me that that plug is probably in pretty rough shape. I bet it's been arcing for a long time. It's about to fail, and uh, I'm going to have to get that out of there. So I quit using it. Every time you plug something in, it sparks like that. You get a really strong ozone smell. And so uh, it's, pretty, it's, pretty, it's pretty bad. So in the bedroom here on this one, and I have it out right now because I had to really work on this box. It was all cracked out and busted. But when I went to pull this out, this cap came off, and those wires weren't twisted. They were just in there loose, and they were using the wire nut. And that's a bad situation. So I feel like I'm making pretty good progress. Today is uh, Tuesday, August 11th, and I uh, should be finished texturing today, which then allows me to get the carpets out, and I'll start painting tomorrow. I might have to spend the day masking. I've still got quite a bit of masking I'm going to have to do. I've got to do something with these lights. I've got an idea on how I'm going to mask those. But for now, I'm just going to get to work. So if you want to follow where we're at, I've got a link to a playlist right here that has all the episodes in order so you can catch up to right where we are today. Your questions and comments are always welcome. I try to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Well, that's going to have to do it. Thanks so much for watching. I sure do appreciate it. Until we get together for the next video, peace. Thank you.